Okay, good morning. Um, I've not done video for a while. I'm just going to do a, um, a video on some mushrooms, mushroom kit which I've uh, purchased, um, found it online, and it's called a the Merry Hill Mushroom Kit. Um, apparently, this has got some good reviews, and I've looked at some videos on YouTube about these kits and uh, seen the results, and I thought they were absolutely fantastic. So I thought for for the sake of how much they cost, which it's about 13, 14 pounds. Um, I think um, the yield that people's been getting from them far outweigh the actual initial cost. So um, I'm going to do a, a video of this kit which uh, arrived yesterday, and uh, I'll do I'll do a video every couple of days and uh, add it to this one, um, and watch the growth of the mushrooms and let's see what we get at the end of it. I'll put it all together and put it all in as one video. So if you keep watching, I'll add the bits on as we go along and post it all as one. Okay, so I'll show you the kit. If you've not seen it before, I'll show you the kit and uh, just talk you through uh, what you have to do. Okay, this is the kit, uh, maybe a mushroom kit. Um, there are some instructions uh, on the side of this tub. Come here, plastic tub. Um, all ready for, for growing uh, with a lid and a set of instructions um, you are supposed to get uh, reading reading these instructions that you get with it um, you are supposed to get a plastic uh, collar or polythene collar which you uh, are supposed to pull up uh, two inches up the sides just to stop any draft and basically you've got the um, the mushroom uh, compost in in the bottom where you there and um, a plastic bag um, full of uh, compost it's um, just there so um, on these instructions it says take the plastic tub out of the cardboard box it comes in a cardboard box obviously um, empty the bag of compost evenly over the top of the myce mycelium uh, which is the roots of the mushroom that's down there uh, and then you empty this over evenly um, keep it sprayed keep it damp not wet but keep it damp uh, daily just check it make sure everything's okay and then it said after about 10 days you should start to see the little very the very little tiny um, mushrooms appearing so uh, what we'll do I'll um, I'll do a video every couple of days when there's been some some change in the top of this and uh, we'll see what sort of harvest they get and uh, how long it takes to to uh, to get them so uh, what I've done, because I've not got the collar with it, it's supposed to be a collar that just, just lifts up, I've actually made one out of an IKEA sandwich bag, uh, just a little collar, which I've slipped slip on there. This is basically how the, uh, the other collar is supposed to work. Um, I've just done, done this by cutting a, a sandwich bag um, in half and um, tele taping it up. Um, where there's a will, there's a way. I have told the uh, the people that do these kits that uh, I'm missing uh, the collar. But um, for the sake of what it is, that's all it basically is. Um, it's, it's sort of a plastic bag. Uh, I've lifted it up two inches. It does make it look a little bit prettier because <laughs> uh, I've got some purple on the bag, so it sort of makes it a little bit. Uh, more decorated but that gives it about two inches from the top it's with these I always thought I've always tried these cheap mushroom kits and I thought you have to keep them in the dark and keep them moist but this says you keep them in the light um, in in uh, daylight but not in direct sunlight and this window that I've got here is uh, perfect for uh, what um, I'm going to be doing so um, I'll just show you where I've sighted it when I've done it I'll get it all sighted up and I'll just show you the uh, the finished bit uh, where we'll be leaving it uh, to grow the mushrooms. Okay, here we are again then. Uh, I've got the exposure right on the camera now so I think you can see a little bit better now. Uh, right, that's where it's going to sit. There's the uh, spray bottle ready for spraying the uh, um, mushrooms. So I'm sitting on there. Uh, on that little, uh, well, it's on the worktop, kitchen worktop, um, and it's Monday the 21st of March 2016, 
and I'll do regular videos and we'll just see how prolific these mushrooms are and how quick they grow and I'll do uh, re regular videos for that uh, we'll just see uh, what we get for the money so uh, okay thanks for watching and I'll uh, I'll do an update to this video later and add it to it thank you Okay, here we are then on Tuesday, uh, day two. Uh, I don't think there's uh, much to tell you about the mushrooms actually. Um, let's just have a quick look in the top. Uh, this is uh, now. Don't look like there's anything uh, developing just yet. So I think as the days go on, it'll get they'll get uh, quicker and quicker. I would assume. So uh, nothing, nothing to report on that score. Uh, there's my little spray bottle, actually match, matches me uh, little draft uh, excluder thing around the top of there, no that does. Uh, right, so what I'll do, uh, just on this little clip for today, I'll just have a quick uh, walk around the garden and just show you exactly what's growing and uh, what's not. Right, here we go then, um, in the greenhouse, this is the, uh, the Wysacer plant which she always uh, puts in my uh, care over the winter to put in the greenhouse and that's uh, nicely springing back into life so uh, that'll be going out now the warmer weather's coming uh, just coming across to this tub of carrots if you remember I put these in oh uh, well before Christmas I believe let me just have a look yeah oh no no sorry I do apologize 16th of January that pot and they are um, what are they they're called um let's have a look Frugund Frugund uh Anantis uh Anantis two two they are so they went in and they, they have uh spouting up rubber now. Uh okay. Um that's just a bucket of compost. All the kitchen waste that uh, my wife gives me, I'll just uh, chuck it in a bucket. Uh when I've got enough I'll uh, use some of uh, these cheap three pound shears from Wilco's and uh, chop it all up and then put it in the compost bin okay let's move on here these are the eight litre bags um, which I put um, potatoes in um, they're all numbered all my bags are all uh, numbered uh, number two number three number one that outside I'll show you that in a minute number four these are all the eight litre bags there's one potato in and I've got a book. Um, the way I've done my book this year, I've changed it actually from when I was showing you, is I've got a, a, a folder, a file folder, uh, with everything wrote down. Um, and each pot will uh, tells me everything uh, that I've done individual for each pot. So uh, it just says like here, uh, rocket. Uh, Pot one was planted in compost sand and coir. Uh, pot two was my own compost that I make, um, plus sand plus coir. Pot three, multi-purpose compost only, 100%. And pot four is 100% uh, coir. Uh, all also had a sprinkle of spuds galore fertilizer and blood fishing bone in the planting hole. Um, that's just rocket. That's uh, pots one to four. Uh, Swift. Their pot numbers 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, and 10 to 16. Uh, these all got different mixtures of compost, sawdust, coir, all have Jack's Magic compost, plus coir, plus spuds galore, uh, bloodfish and bone in the planting hole. Um, pots 10 to 16 also have this microcycle fungi thing that everybody keeps doing videos about, so I've been and bought some and put some in and see what we do with them. Okay. Um, these I've got to uh, write down, I have put them in the pentland and javelin, but I'll write down the pots and uh, what's in them and one thing or another. That'll be for the Charlotte pots, this will be for the Nadine, and then the Sarpo. Uh, these have already gone in, this is uh, four, I think they were four seeds, potatoes of Ven Veneza. It's uh, some that we just bought from the supermarket that went to seed, uh, <coughs> and that is pot number 17. 
uh, right down the list, uh, Microsoft fungi added to the to to the chits. Just sprinkle it on the chits before I put them in. Panther and Jack's magic koi, bluefish and bone uh, and spuds Um Got some swift continued to go there. And then on this other page is this is a bit more in depth now. Um, this is where <coughs> I've got the variety, the pot number, the date it's planted, the number of seed potatoes uh, in the pot, uh, and then it'll say date harvested, uh, how many days it's grown, what the pot weight, individual pot weights will be, and comments what these have actually been uh, planted in, 15 litre pot. So there's two seed potatoes in a 15 litre pot, one seed potato, eight litre bag, uh, so on and so forth. Same with the Swift, pots five to nine. Uh, they was done on the 26th of Feb in the greenhouse. I've done some more Swift on the 4th of March. And these are the veneers, just the one pot of veneers, pot 17. I've now put the Pentland Javelin in. Pots 18, 19 and 20. Um, they're bigger pots. Uh, I've got some towers which I'll show you. And I've put four seed potatoes in each tower. So four, four seed potatoes and four in the tower. And these these last few have got the Microsoft fungi. I didn't I didn't have it when I when I um, did these potatoes there. So uh, we'll go outside and I'll just show you what I mean by uh, when the potato towers and the and the individual different bits and bobs. Uh, I'll just finish off uh, the greenhouse roundup first. Anyway, that's my little folder. It just keeps me up to date as to what I'm doing. All right, there's some uh, some beetroot on the go. They need uh, transplanting out and uh, some uh, tomato plants there. I've done some of my own but I've bought these from uh, Garden Centre as well just to be on the safe side. Um, okay, some lettuce. These are in the uh, self-watering troughs. I don't like putting them out outside because of the uh, slugs and one thing and another. I can keep, keep, I can control them better. But there's a tube there where you water and it goes straight down and they they grab the water from the bottom. Instead of having too many of these tubs which take a lot of room up, uh, I'm also using cut out bottles, two, one litre or two litre bottles. Uh, put two plants in there. Um, at the back, if you can see, uh, it runs all the way along the back of the lettuce. They're the peas, they're in a drain pipe, uh, gutter, sorry, guttering. Um, they are called, oh, I forget what they're called now. But uh, that's them. I'm also using um, four litre milk bottles. Cut the tops off. A couple of lettuce in there. A couple of lettuce in there. And that's the bottom part of a four litre bottle. And I'll just put one in there. Leeks. Got some leeks growing nicely in there. They're really coming on quite well. Now these are um, root trainers. And there's, believe it or not, the parsnips. Now the thing is I've got to transplant them out before the um, the tap root gets to the bottom otherwise they're going to get, uh, they're not going to go straight. So uh, they are, that's the idea with them anyway, I'm trying that. Uh, but what I've done further down is I've done them in um, kitchen roll holders. Uh, so that's uh, that's one that's come up now. And when it gets to about that height it means that the, uh, the tap root is getting near the bottom. So with a bit of drain pipe hole uh, gouging all that, bore a hole out, fill it and fill it with that, just drop it in. There's some more parsnips. I tried different things instead of just putting the seed in the ground, I try uh, I try all sorts. These are the uh, shallots. Red sun, red sun shallots. Uh, red onions and the white onions. Looks bright and beautiful now. Uh, all coming on nice. So what we'll do then, <coughs> we'll go outside now and I'll just show you these pots, what I mean, um, that I've got in my book. Oh, that's me. This is me, Bill and Ben. He just hangs there and uh, broke his leg. But that's how, uh, that's how I do my lettuce, individual. Like that. I hate them in the garden, all the slugs and the bite marks and everything out of them. So, uh, right, we'll go into the garden and I'll show you these pots. What I did forget to show you before I do leave the greenhouse. Pot two, pot three, and pot four are still in the greenhouse. Uh, I'll show you what I mean by it now. Uh, pot two is there, and that's uh, 
Start up nice with there. You see? That's about in love with it. So if I look in my little uh, my little file here, a bit uh, awkward to try and do. Landed, but there you go. So pot two is uh, rocket. Uh, pot number two, 29th of January. That's planted. Just one seed potato in the eight litre bag. Okay. Um, and then if I go over to the next page. Uh, well, go back, go back a page. Oh, this is uh, this is awkward. So pot two, that was potted in my compost only with a little bit of sand, a little bit of coir, and then the spotted galore, etc., etc. So that's pot two, and that is obviously doing a little bit better than pot three and pot four. So uh, that's what I mean by uh, keeping a check on each individual one to see uh, the results and how quick uh, each uh, pot grows. Right, out we go. Right, just out into me uh, when the raised beds are. Uh, for the moment, because I've got nothing in this raised bed at the moment, I'm going to put my beans in, run the beans and start growing them. Uh, this is a, a little £10 cloche that I got from Wilkinson which is ideal for putting my pots of uh, potatoes out um, just keep the frost off and as you can see all my individual pots that's pot 13, 12 uh, they're all in here uh, all scattered about everywhere uh, go across to the next little hole now this is pot number one the very first pot that I planted um, and there just starting to oh probably that's that that's starting to sprout now so I'll keep my eye on that so I'm just uh, just got the lid off the, uh, the flap off this it's, uh, it's got a couple of flaps that uh, zip around and that. so keep them in there I've got one pot number 16 is here out on its own because I haven't got room but I've got these little one pound um, cloches from the uh, pound shop which uh, fold out and open up spring open and fit over the top so they're quite good for the pan right okay so that pot number one which I told you about which is uh, going quite well refer to my little book pot one was planted in compost sand and coir and obviously the extra there and then that tells you what date pot one was done 29th of January 2016 okay right We'll move on to the next section of the garden. Oh, just before I go, this is a self-made cloche, water pipe and some plastic. And inside there I've got some more uh, pots of spuds. In fact, I've got spuds everywhere. Right, to continue. Okay, this part, it more or less, uh, more for the benefit of Claire on Claire's allotment than anything. She asked uh, for an update on my sweet peas, which I uh, I started in the winter time. Uh, these are sweet peas. Uh, I put three in each pot, and they were done on the 12th of October. And what I've been doing is uh, pinching the, uh, the heads out. There you get the heads. I've just been pinching those out, uh, and this makes them really, really bushy. So once the warm weather comes, they can pop straight in. These are all my new strawberry plants which I've, I've grown from runners and they'll be ready for going into the uh, strawberry planter soon. More shallots there. Uh, got one there that's uh, sprouting up. And there's my brussels. Like I said uh, a few weeks ago, the, the, my challenge is to, to sort of grow all the veg for Christmas day. I'll be able to uh, pick it on uh, Christmas Eve. So uh, hopefully everything uh, goes to plan and we can do that. While I'm in this little bit of the garden, uh, I'll just come round to some of the garlic, solid white garlic. That's all. Uh, that's all seems to be doing quite fine. That good condition. It's had some uh, sulphate of potash dug in. So that's doing absolutely fine. Right, we'll go to the next bit. Ah, 
Right, uh, these are some spring onions I put in <laughs> uh, well before Christmas. Well, these was October time. Hopefully, I'm hoping they uh, start to uh, take out a little bit. So, uh, yeah, they're not being too bad. Um, oh, there's the the Nomi's out in all weathers. No, it's not Newcastle, it's Knox County. There's my leeks that's been in over winter. Got those little uh, clips around the mosquito leaves off the ground. Oh, okay, come down there. These are the uh, potato towers I'm going to be using. Nothing in them at the moment, in those particular ones. Um, I'll show you the others where I've started them off. Some more garlic there and some more garlic at the back. All seems to be doing quite well. Right, okay, just move down to this bed. I've got some overspilled garlic in here. I'd uh, had a few over so I put them in. Okay, more leeks. And I put bottles down. I think I've shown you this before, bottles and um, the blanch and, and uh, them clips just to keep the leaves up. Uh, this will be the bed for the first lot of beetroot. Stick them in that tub there. That's the uh, elephant garlic. Two there growing there. And there's one in the middle not started. That's not uh, appeared yet. Okay, these are all the... some more garlic there. Hmm. All right. Onions, these are overwintering onions, these have been out all winter. I've covered them over with the plastic. <coughs> and uh seem to be coming on okay, I put the black uh, this black um, stuff down hopefully to stop the uh, stop the weeds. I want to see how that goes. <coughs> right, I put some carrots in here. Um, using um, a seed tape. Uh, I made the seed tape myself. Uh, these are Nantes, Nantes 5. I put uh, see all the sticks there. I put three rows in, and then I've got some room here to put some more in. Uh, I made the seed tape with a uh, kitchen towel, um, folded over, and then uh, glued, put the seeds in and glue them down with uh, flour and water. Which I, that was a YouTube video that I spotted and copied. So uh, see how my own seed tapes go. More garlic. This is all sold at white. Went in on the first of October. Really, I love to grow garlic over winter. It gives me something to look at. Okay, these are my parsnips. Uh, the, these are the parsnips that I'm putting in the tubs that I'm telling you about. I use a drain pipe, dig out the compost, and then drop them in. So those at the back. Oiled them in tubes, and these are seeds. Oops, sorry about that. So much. Uh, right, so I got as far as these uh, parsnips. So I'll just go over this again. These are done in kitchen milk. Uh, did quite well last year actually, so I've done it again. And these are the parsnips I've just uh, bored out all with uh, drain pipe all the way down to the bottom of the tub and then filled it with um, a very very fine compost um, so that the tap root was all the way down without uh, any obstructions ok so that's them this will be uh, these are um, just little strawberry pots these are, these are what I stick over um, the uh, parsnips at night just to give them, I'll just show you I'll just stick them over there Gives them a little bit of protection during the cold nights. Uh, this is another tub that I've made. I'm going to try and do some big carrots with them. What do you know? Some more garlic. Alright, these are the Pentland Javelin that I've done. Uh, pots 17, 18, 19, and 20. Um, like I say in my book, I, I know I, I think I've put uh, I put two on the bottom, 
sweet potatoes north and south, um, covered them over and then put two potatoes, uh, one east, one west. So there's four in each of these. And then I'll top them up as I go. And then obviously when that comes up, um, this bit will then go on there, like so, like so. As it pops up and goes up, then it goes up. And then you can put another one on the top of that. So they go three high, as high as you want them to go, actually. So put that back on there for now. We don't need it yet. That's it there. And these, uh, these are the 30 litre tubs at the back. And they would just have um, sarpo mirrors in them. Uh, I might I might stick a tower on the top. Just use one of the towers, tower sections on the top of them. I don't know yet. It's all experimental what I'm doing so but like I say that's the way I'm doing my uh, potatoes now so I can see what yields I get and everything's wrote down in the book what's in each pot and how I've done it and I can't wait for the reveals right so uh, this is me on my update for Tuesday the 21st of March which I've added to the mushroom uh, video um, and catch you later Right, good morning, it's Saturday the 2nd of uh, April and I've got good news, uh, we've actually got mushrooms going in this uh, this Merrifields mushroom kit. Uh, apparently I found out that I'd actually bought the wrong the wrong kit, they do, they do two kits, they do a, a gift pack, um, which is the one I got with a plastic lid on, um, and then they do a normal pack which is a pound more expensive, uh, which has ready spawning mushrooms and I didn't realise that. Me, Mr. Cheaper, went for the pound cheapest, uh, ch a pound cheaper, and uh, obviously this is the the gift pack which takes time to uh, spawn. But we've actually got mushrooms growing, so I'll show you them. Back in a minute. Okay, here we are. Not been moved. It's just been sprayed every day. We just purple sprayer, and there is one chestnut mushroom. And if we look closely, another chestnut mushroom just there. We have two chestnut mushrooms. So if just those two grow, we'll have one each for breakfast, me and the wife. Wonderful. So anyway, that it's my fault. I did buy the wrong one. This is a gift, uh, a gift set. Um, so next time, uh, when I do get one, I will buy the uh, the ready spawning uh, mushrooms to see. Uh, to see how they go so yeah at least they, at least they're growing i thought i'd show you that right so there you have it that's my uh, little video uh, about the merry merry hill mushroom kit and uh, with my uh, garden update in between i will be doing some more uh, videos now because obviously it's getting warmer and uh, things to do in the garden so i'll be doing the odd uh, update most of my potatoes are in now uh, so I'll be updating on that shortly. So uh, hope you enjoy the video and thanks for watching.